Good day and welcome to the COVID-19 Coronavirus Information Lecture brought to you by HSP Group South Africa and presented by Dr. Seymour Weiner. Welcome and thank you for joining us. We will firstly provide the presentation on the COVID-19 information and thereafter we will be addressing frequently asked questions and answers. I would like to introduce our presenter, Dr. Simi Weiner. Apart from being a medical doctor, Dr. Weiner has obtained a Master's in Medicine and a Diploma in Tropical Medicine and Hygiene. He is a leading virologist and microbiologist, and we would like to wish him a very warm welcome. And now, Doctor, I hand over to you. Well, the coronavirus belongs to a large family of viruses and they are common both in man and in animals. And the animals that we know it occurs in camels, cats, cattle and bats. In man, illness can range from the common cold to individuals who are severely ill. The coronavirus can very rarely cause infection in man when it, when it is transferred from an animal to man. And we call these zoonoses. So what's zoonosis? It's an infection transmitted from an animal to a man. Now coronavirus has caused this type of zoonotic infection to occur in man to, on two previous occasions. The one was Middle East Respiratory Syndrome or MERS and the second one was Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome well, let's look at this in more detail. You get Middle East Respiratory Syndrome or MERS, first reported in Saudi Arabia in 2012. You get Acute Respiratory Syndrome or SARS, first reported in February 2003 in Asia. And finally now, we have COVID-19, which was first reported in Wild City in China. Now let's look at MERS transmitted um, from the camel to man, um, SARS transmitted from a seabed cat to man, but we not, do not know the intermittent vector of COVID-19 that transmits the virus to man. All these three viruses have in common they're all beta coronaviruses. They originate in bats. They transmit it via respiratory droplet, and they may cause acute, severe respiratory illness, and may even result in mortality. COVID-19 outbreak, the present outbreak, was first identified in Wuhan city in China, was reported to the WHO on the 31st of December 2019. In January the 30th, 2020, the WHO declared a global health emergency. And the 11th of March this year, the WHO declared a global pandemic. Well, how is COVID-19 transmitted? Initially, the virus was transmitted by direct exposure to live animals. Now we know it's transmitted directly between man to man or human to human. How is it transmitted? Via respiratory droplet, coughing, sneezing, and in fact, talking. Um, and what's very, very important is that asymptomatic patients are able to transmit the virus. Um, the virus may in fact contaminate objects. So what happens is when we cough, sneeze and talk, some of the virus lands on innate objects and they can survive for a period of time. If we touch these objects and then touch our mouth, eyes, nose or face, we can transfer the virus from these objects 
into our respiratory tract and this may result in infection. Now, how long does the virus survive on surfaces? Well, the truth is we don't know. Um, but we do know from other coronaviruses that they can persist from for a few hours to several days. So how do we deal with the situation? Well, we should clean surfaces with suspected viral contamination with disinfectant. And we should also wash our hands frequently with soap and water or with an alcohol-based hand rub. And what's important is it should contain 70% alcohol. So after the virus has been transmitted, it goes into our respiratory tract and there the virus builds up to, until it has a reached a critical viral load. And from then, we can, can become sick. So the incubation period for this virus to cause disease is 1 to 14 days. What are the symptoms of disease? They fever, high fever, cough, tiredness, shortness of breath, and this may progress to breathing difficulties, pneumonia, and if we're very unlucky to respiratory failure, there may also kidney failure, and, and ultimately death may occur. A large number of these patients who, who um, acquire the virus will be asymptomatic and feel no ill effects. But a lot of people will be symptomatic um, and what's very, very important to remember is that 80% of individuals have mild symptoms and will not require any special respiratory treatment. Approximately one out of six, which is 16%, become severely ill, developing breathing difficulties. Now, who are the individuals most at risk for severe illness? And these are older individuals and those with underlying medical problems. How is the disease or the diagnosed? Well, we want to find the presence of virus and we do that by a process called PCR or polymerase chain reaction. And this process detects the presence of viral genetic material. And we want respiratory uh, samples and nasopharyngeal swabs or serum from the blood. At present, we're looking at nasopharyngeal samples for the diagnosis. As far as treatment, there's no specific antiviral treatment at present. And we really give the patients supportive care oxygen and sometimes we may have to ventilate them. So how do we manage the scenario? And we divide that into, into three phases. The first of all, the prevention of infection, the dealing with individuals who've been exposed, and the care of ill patients. Well, let's look at prevention. We want individuals to avoid unnecessary travel, avoid crowds, avoid sick children, avoid patients with respiratory tract infections, and finally take care of your health. Because when you look after yourself, you become less susceptible to illness. And this really means healthy diet, exercise, and sleep. When we talk about prevention, the first important factor is social distancing. And we want individuals to stay one meter or three foot at least from another person who is ill or who we suspect may be a carrier. We want you to practice cough hygiene 
and sneeze hygiene, which means covering one's mouth or nose when one's coughing or sneezing with a tissue and immediately depositing the tissue. Or we can use one's bent arm technique. Regular hand washing is crucial or the use of 70% alcohol-based hand rubs. And very, very important, avoid touching one's eyes, nose, and mouth, as in this way we deposit the virus into the respiratory tract. And here's a summary slide. How do we avoid coronavirus infection? Wash one's hands with soap and water. Avoid close contact with sick people. Avoid touching one's eyes, nose, mouth with what unwashed hands. And ideally, stay at home if you're sick, because in that way, you're going to transmit the infection to other people. Who, at, who are at high, high risk for severe infection? And these really are elderly and immunocompromised people. So individuals with heart, lung disease, individuals who have got diabetes or kidney disease or any illness that dampens the immune system. How do we manage an individual who's been exposed to the virus? And these individuals aren't sick yet, but they know they've got a history of exposure to another individual who was found to have been carrying the virus. Well, we want these individuals to go into self-isolation for 14 days. Avoid visitors. Ideally, stay in a specific room with one's own bathroom. If one is in contact with other people, wear a mask and maintain a distance of at least a meter apart. Clean one's hands frequently with soap and water or alcohol-based um, sanitizer. And if there are in eight objects in your room, like tables and chairs, frequently disinfect them. Now, managing a person who's been exposed and is ill and again, it's very, very similar. Practice cough and sneeze hygiene with tissues, discard them immediately, then wash one's hands, avoid sharing household items like dishes, cups, eating utensils, towels. And when one uses them, wash one's hands with soap and water and frequently disinfect items such as tabletops, toilets, phones, and computers. When it comes to cleaning or laundering one's clothes, wash them at a high temperature, ideally greater than 60 degrees, tumble dry at a high temperature, and iron at the highest setting. If an individual develops a fever, cough, breathing difficulties, seek urgent medical attention. It's important to phone in before you arrive at your doctor, but essentially what will happen is they'll send you to one of the emergency clinics to be attended to. So the testing for the virus, we want a nasal swab. We want to test only people who are symptomatic with a history of contact with a case of COVID-19. In addition, symptomatic individuals with a history of a contact with an individual who has traveled to a high-risk country. And finally, those individuals who are symptomatic for an unexplained reason, they also should be tested. What about testing in asymptomatic patients? Well, early in disease, the viral load may be very low, and this may result in a false negative test. And this false negative test results in a false sense of security. What about wearing masks recommended for medical profession, those who are ill or those 
caring for one who has COVID-19 infection. Well, that concludes my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Doctor. That was quite enlightening. Um, we have some frequently asked questions about the virus, which we'd like to, to pick your brain about. So firstly, can you get COVID-19 from animals? Well, not from the animals that we have in our environment. Although the virus was first transmitted from animals to man, but that occurred in China. The animals that we have in our environment aren't the ones that transmit the virus. Once you have had the coronavirus, do you become immune? Well, yes, of course. That's how we deal with any viral infection. You get an infection, you build up immunity via antibodies and the T cells, and then you become immune to infection by that particular virus. How much does the swab test cost? Well, that's going to vary from laboratory to laboratory, and it can run from 1,000 to 1,400. But it's important to remember the NRCD is doing this test for free. If I, uh, if I have a person that is incubating the coronas, coronavirus, will a flu vaccine help? Well, it'll help. It won't help them prevent the uh, coronavirus infection, but it'll help them prevent influenza. And obviously getting influenza and the coronavirus at the same time is not a good idea. How long will it take to get the results from the swab test back? Well, this range from 48 hours to 72 because it takes time to do the test and also we're running huge numbers of tests at this present time. How long can you be exposed to a person who has had the coronavirus before it is transmitted to you? Well, we don't know the answer to that. Um, it's probably close contact will result potentially infection. How long, in your opinion, will it take before life returns back to normal after the coronavirus? And again, we don't know. We've now got a three-week shutdown and um, hopefully the numbers decrease and then they'll make the call on when we can start returning. But this, is, this scenario is going to take months. And for an individual who has had the coronavirus, how long does it take for them to start feeling better and to recover fully? Well, they should start feeling better within two weeks and it takes a little while after that for them to start feeling completely well. Does hand sanitizer that does not contain any alcohol work to avoid transmission? The only, only sanitizer that works is one with 70% alcohol and of course remember hand washing with soap and water is equally effective. We are led to believe that only the elderly people have been hospitalized and that younger people are recovering quicker. However, in other news reports, uh, they are reporting that young people are being hospitalized. Who is being hospitalized? By and large, it relates to how ill you are. So by and large, it's elderly people. But we do know some younger people can also get very ill and require hospitalization and support. Do we know if there is such a thing as a carrier of the coronavirus? Well, there isn't a carrier as such, but there is an individual who has got asymptomatic infection who does not know they, they have the infection and they are transmitting the virus. Is, is there any lasting damage to the body once you have had the virus and then re fully recovered from it? Well, once you've recovered, there should be no residual damage to the body. If you get sick and self-quarantine, what medicine should you take in treating yourself? Well, if you get sick and you self-quarantine, it'll really be a flu-like illness and not feeling well. Once you start getting short of breath, then you need um, medical attention and support. But in the initial phase, things like Panada, Paracetamol would be the type of drug you need to take and one should avoid anti-inflammatories. How do you recover from the virus if there is no treatment? Well, the body has got a great immune system and we're able to fight viruses and bacteria without any, any therapy because we've got uh, T cells and B cells and these deal with the infection. 
Can a hot shower or a sauna stop the virus? No, and in fact, it's just the opposite. When you go into a sauna with other people, you're at greater risk for acquiring the virus. If I have asthma, am I at a bigger risk of becoming severely ill? Should I get the coronavirus? Well, if you've got asthma and the asthma is uncontrolled, you are at higher risk for severe disease. So it's important to avoid individuals um, with potentially the virus and also to make sure you're taking your medication and that your lungs are in the best possible condition. So we know that masks are in short supply. Will a fabric mask help in avoiding the infection? I think so. I think the ideal mask, of course, is what we call an N95 mask. But any mask, to a certain extent, it has some protective advantage. Thank you. That concludes our information lecture on COVID-19. You are most welcome to contact us should you have any further questions. Should you wish to have us present this training exclusively to your company and its employees, please do contact us for a quote. Our contact details are currently displayed. You can also find our contact details on our website at www.hspgroup.co.za. We hope this has been an informative session to help you, your family and friends, as well as your employees adequately deal with COVID-19.